as I was sitting down thinking how good God is to me, it came across my mind to do a little poem. And the title of it is, If God Move His Hand, Where Would I Be? If God Move His Hand, Where Would I Be? I wouldn't be able to walk, to see, to hear, or to think. My life would end. Thank God for His grace and mercy that moved in such a powerful way. When I'm knocked down, it lifts me up and guides my feet. When I'm stepped on, His grace brushes me off and leads me into the guiding light. When I'm talked about and it seems like I'm all by myself, God speaks with me, a soft voice saying, as long as you have Jesus, you're never alone. When it seems that you locked in, pray, and prayer will unlock the door for you. It will open up windows and let sunshine in. When enemies cross your path, he will move and see you through. When your tears come, he will dry your eyes. And that is why I say, thank God for his grace and his mercy. I was raised up in the New uh, Union community, a place where everybody was concerned about everybody. If the community was just a family, because when one person hurt, the other hurt. As children, I started working in the field at the age of probably six years old. We would go to work. We had to be to work at seven in the morning. And they had the big dinner bell. They would ring at 7 in the morning for us to go to work. 12 o'clock, they would ring that bell for us to come out of the field. And they would have what they called uh, aluminum plates. We call them pie plates now. And they would set that pot of peas or greens on that table. And we will sit on the benches around that table. And they would bring that pot of greens or whatever out and fixed plates, and we would eat under the trees. And when uh, we finished eating, one o'clock, they'll ring the bell for us to go back to work. And we would work until six o'clock. The sun is red behind the trees. We'll come out the field. Children was getting 25 cents a day all day long. Our parents was getting 40 cents a day which was a lot of money. Back then, <clears throat> they made thread, what they called ball. Balls were spread, and some people call it twine. And we would take that ball of thread with us to work. And if it's a creek out by where we working, when we finished working, we'll break off a piece of that twine and break a sticking foot on it. And we had big safety pin, and we'll tie a safety pin on the end of that twine. And I know a lot of you don't know what bull grass is, but it grow down by the creek and we'll pull that bull grass up and that's where we'll get baits and tie on that safety pin. And we will fish in the branch to catch fish so we have something to eat. That was no caught, but when the fish hit it, it will pull the string and we know it's a fish on it. And sometimes they would be like three or four fingers, and we, Mama would cook them like a whole cake, and we will sit down and eat. That's what we went through with. It was always, uh, well, when I'm going to the, at the Glasgow, it was just a little school. It didn't have a name. It was just somewhere where they began to teaching us. But the first school, they named it New New, and it was just a little one-room school. And then they built the other school where they have different classrooms, New New, and then they named it New New and High School. But you went through the seventh grade, and then you, from the seventh grade, you had to come to Thomasville to go through the eleventh grade. When I started working for Miss Lawton back probably in 1972, uh, she had one son there. 
might have been later in that, and so it was Harvey. And I would take Harvey out in the sun on the, on the bench and in the morning time when I go to work. But after the children grew up, she took them out of public school and she taught them at home. And she, knowing that I hadn't finished school, she would allow me 30 minutes of my work time is to sit with the children while she was teaching them. And she told me, just read. You can learn to help yourself by reading. Just reading on your own and learning to take the words by syllables. She said, you can help yourself. In one room where mom and dad had slept before he died, the other room is where the children slept. They had the two beds in there. The girls slept in one bed and the boys in the other. And it was more, three, three, two girls then and, and five boys. And the boys slept across with the bed so they'd have enough room. We, we used to quilt. We used to have quilt parties. We'll go to this person. They had quilt frames. They put a hang up, they, they hang, had chains hanging from the top of the house. And they make a frame and they'll put that quilt, they'll put that quilt on the floor, they put the lining down. Then whatever they are gonna pad it with, they'll put it on top of that lining. Then they'll put that top on top of that and tack it where it won't move. Then you will base it in that frame. And then we would have people to come, we sit down with that, that frame low enough to be in your lap and we will quilt, that quilt. Dad got rattlesnake bit. He didn't just, we, we black people didn't have cars. And what happened is he was stacking peanuts and he lacking about, a, he needed one more stack is to finish taking them. Why daddy pull his shoes off? No, but we don't understand it. All we can say it had to happen. Cause he pulled his shoes off and went out in the woods to cut another stack pole. And he had to pass on an oak tree. And under that oak tree was a brown brew bra, bra. And so when he came back and dug the hole to put the stack pole down. My mama kept seeing him looking down. And she asked him, Beta, that was his name, what's wrong? He said, Hannah, he said, when I went under that tree, he said, passed by that brown brook, bro. He said, that thing scratched me. And I, he said, my foot swelling. And my mama said, you sure it wasn't a snake? He said, no, cause it's clean up under there. And so mama insisted for him to go back and buy that bra. And when he passed, looked at the brow, about a foot and a half, that was the rattlesnake. So he cut a, a, a branch and killed the rattlesnake. So mama rest down and told him out of her slip, cause back then they wore husband slips as they called, and t caught at his leg to try to prevent the poison from going, you know, circulating. And so he got on the mule and he rode about a mile and a half to the rickets and they brought him to town and they, they he bit him right around the ankle and they cut that area out and uh, they draw blood and did whatever but they didn't have the treatments then that they have now so daddy lived that happened in September and uh, he lived until April the next year, when the sap began to rise, he got sick and that area broke out. And they took Data to the hospital. And the doctor say what happened, there was a potion of poison that had lodged in the joint of that hip. And as the sap began to rise, the poison rose and crossed his heart. But the hardest thing is that back then mama wasn't able to have 
him in bottle. They took him to the undertaker, but she couldn't, wasn't able to help pay for all of that. And they brought daddy back out to the house and they laid him out in the bedroom. And they put a saucer of table salt over his navel is to keep him from purging until they buried him. And uh, it, I know she would have done better, but she couldn't. But he was a good man. He was a good father. And my mother was an excellent mother. And people, my sister, she died on her 17th birthday and mama had to take me out of school. I didn't even get the opportunity to finish the seventh grade. And she got pregnant. And the boy thought she wasn't good enough. So he married her best friend. And so she just grieved herself to death. And that left this little boy three months and 27 days old. So my mother took me out of school to be a mother for the baby. It's hard to know what my mother went through is to raise us. She didn't have nothing, but she did her best. That's what hurt me now when I see children so disobedient Oh, so disobedient and so ungrateful and they get everything and we couldn't. We didn't have it, but we were grateful for what we had. You have opportunities to be anything, but you got to be obedient. You got to learn how to honor your mother and your parents. I'm blessed to be here. I came through a lot. I came through a lot.